In this episode, we are going to talk about the Norton's theorem. So Norton's theorem is one of the theorems that help us to find current in one active element, just as we saw for the Thevenin's theorem. So in Norton's theorem, what we are interested in, we are also interested in three parameters where we have what we call the IN. And this is what we call the Norton's current source. So this is Norton's current source, our IN. We will look for that. And we will also look for RN. That is Norton's resistance. So that is also for the Norton's resistance. We will also have the last parameter where we will consider the RL, which is also the load resistance. So the Norton's theorem is very simple. We are going to find all these three parameters from a given circuit. The Norton's current source, that is also the Norton's current, the Norton's resistance, we will also look at the load resistance. And we always know that the load resistance will be given in the question. The load resistance will be what? Given in a question will be given. Now, what we have here as IN, the Norton's current, RN, the Norton's resistance, and the load resistance, we are going to combine them in a parallel circuit. Pay attention. In Thevenin's theorem, we do that the voltage, the Thevenin voltage, the Thevenin resistance, all in series. But for the Norton's theorem, we are going to consider the Norton's current, the Norton's resistance, and the load resistance in parallel circuit, meaning they are all going to be parallel. So this is how we are going to have our circuit so this is going to be the Norton's current which is our IN in parallel to the Norton's resistance which is RN which will also be in parallel to the load resistance so RL so this is what we are going to have now if current IN is coming let's say it is going to split itself among this resistors say this is i1 this is i2 now the current passing through the load resistor that we are looking for will be i1 and we can see that this is current divider and by the current divider rule what we are going to see here is the current i1 through the load resistor in which we are to calculate is going to be rn you can check out for the episode on current divider and you understand now that will be rn rl times the total current which is i n are you okay now finding the i n and the r n has its own way of doing it and the r n is found in the same way we find the rth the thevenin's resistance and the norton's resistance are all the same are we okay so for example if i'm having a circuit this way where i have a current source let me get this as my current source i have a voltage source and say i have one resistor over here so this is my circuit i'll call this r1 R2, R3. Please pay attention. This will help you to understand the Norton's theorem. And this is 2 amperes. Now, in order to find my Rn, which is the Norton's resistance, I am going to short circuit. So, we are going to short circuit the voltage source. So, short circuit means we are going to take it out and it will be like only a wire at the point. So the voltage source. 
and for the current source we are going to open circuit meaning current is not going to flow at where we have our current source so in all this is what we are going to have for the diagram our resistor 2 is going to be there resistor 1 is going to be there now the 2 ampere current is short or open circuit meaning current is not going to flow so we are not going to draw so we have our r3 and voltage source is open circuit meaning it is taken out and replaced by just a wire so this will be my r1 r2 and say r3 so this the question will be where are we finding the current through so in this case let's find current through the r3 so that r3 will be our load resistor so in that way we are going to have it this way we are going to have it this way so that at the end the terminals of r3 will be opened so we have the terminals open and here is our rn so when we look at this, we can see that the two resistors, R1 and R2, are in series. So, meaning our northern resistance is going to be R1 plus R2, so that we get the northern resistance. When we come to the calculation of the IN, which is the northern um, current source or the northern current, we are also going to short circuit the load resistor so for example if in this diagram we are interested in finding current the load resistor is r3 so if you are calculating for the in this is how the diagram is going to be the load resistor is going to be out so i still have my r2 and the load resistor the terminals I'm going to short circuit it so this is going to be it is not going to be opened short circuit means it is closed and this will be my i n remember if it is open there's no current but now it is closed so that current will flow so i can choose the direction to be in this direction or that direction let's solve an example and see how best we will use the notice theorem it is very simple just focus on finding your IN, RN, and the load resistance which will be given in the question. We have an example to solve. Now, example. Using Norton's theorem, determine current in the 4 ohm resistor. We have to determine the current in the 4 ohm resistor. So, this will be our solution. And from the question, we are given the load resistance which is the four ohms are we okay so we are now interested in i n and we are also interested in r n so i'll prefer to find my r n first so finding the northern's resistance r n from the diagram we only have voltage sources two voltage source so i'm going to short circuit them and we will find the Norton's resistance at the 4 ohm resistor. So this is what we are going to have. Now we can see that the 32 ohm is short circuited, taken out. This is the 2 ohm we have. This will be my 8 ohm. And this is where the load resistor is. I'm looking for the Rn. And I'm going to short circuit this part so this will be my circuit here is where i'm calculating for rn this is 2 ohms and this is 8 ohm now if i'm to find rn from this circuit what do you see you can see that if current is to flow it is going to divide itself among the 2 ohm and the 8 ohm resistor so we can say the 2 ohm resistor is parallel to the 8 ohm resistor therefore our rn the northern resistance is going to be you can use the inverse approach or 2 by 8 on 
2 plus 8. And this is going to give us 8 on 5. That is also equal to 1.6 ohms for the northern resistance. So when you study it, we have our load resistor or the load resistance given. We've calculated for the northern resistance. So we are left with the northern current. So this is how we also go by the northern current. So finding our IN. So here too, you can use any of the circuit analysis approach to find what you want to find. Are we okay? So you can use the branch, you can use the mesh current approach, the superposition, or any other approach. So here I'm going to draw the diagram again and find my IN. This is what I'm going to have. This is my current source for the 32. And this is going to be the 2 ohm resistor. I still have my 8 ohm resistor. So this is my voltage source. And my circuit is closed. Remember, we are finding IN. So we are not opening this terminal, although we have the points over there but we are not open because if we open, no current is going to flow and we want to find the current over there. So it is short circuited, not open. So I'll call this point as my IN. And because we have a 20 volt current source here, I will assume the current is going this direction. Are we okay? So a current source is also here. I will assume it is coming this direction. This is two ohms and this is eight. Oh, so this current by case here, they will leave at this point. And by the case here, you can see that the current here can be expressed. Let me call this current also as my I1. So I can say the current through the 8 is I1 plus IN. Yes, the summation of the current entering the node is equal to the current leaving. So we have it that way. Now I want to make current analysis. I'll consider the two loops. So from loop one, what do I have? The voltage drop across the resistors is going to be equal to the 32 volt voltage source. So that is going to be the 32 volt is equal to the voltage across the two ohm, which is two by the current I1 plus eight by the current I1 plus IN. So with this, I'm going to simplify this and I'm going to have 10 I1 plus 8 I N equal to 32 as my equation one from loop one. Now, if I consider loop two, I'm also going to say the voltage drop across the eight. We only have one resistor in loop two, which is the eight ohm. So that is simple. So Voltage drop, which is 8 multiplied by the current, should be equal to the voltage source, 20. So making an equation, we are going to get 8I1 plus 8I, IN should be equal to 20 as my equation 2. Now, when you solve these equations simultaneously, you are going to get your I1 to be equal to 6 amperes and your IN, which is the Norton's current we are looking for, as negative 7 on 2 amperes. So the negative indicates that the actual direction of the current goes this way. Are you okay? So we have to work with that. If we want to work with the positive, then we have to change the direction of the current. So now we have the three parameters we are going to combine them in series and find the current through the load resistor. Let's look at how we can do that. Now we have to get the tray in series. So first, this will be my current source. The Norton's current and it will be in parallel with the Norton's resistance. And that is also going to be parallel to the load resistor. So this is my RL, which is we are to find current in the 4 ohm. Now I have RN and RN is also given 
from our calculation as we saw it to be 1.6 ohm and our IN is calculated to be. Now, when we check the direction from the diagram, it is moving up from the voltage source, which is negative. So the actual sense is supposed to what? Come down to be positive. So meaning the current flow is downwards to be positive, and that is going to give us positive seven on two. So assuming this current is coming, it is going to split itself into two. And let me call this I naught and this as I prime. So we can see that the I prime is the current going to pass through the load resistor four ohms. That's what the question is asking. So with this simple circuit, we can use the current divider rule that the current passing through the load resistor, which is I prime, should be equal to the Rn resistor over Rn plus the load multiplying I n. And that is going to give us I prime to be. Now we have Rn, which is 1.6 on 1.6 plus the load resistor, which is 4 times 7. Point or 7 on 2 amperes, meaning our current I prime is going to give us 1 ampere. So in all, there is a 1 ampere current going to flow through the load resistor. So this is how we go by the Norton's approach. It is very simple. When you find your RN, when you find your IN, and you find your load resistance. Thank you for watching this episode. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and drop your comment. In the next episode, we are going to solve two complex problems on the Norton's theorem. So let's look at that in the next episode.